out in two minutes and begin to pray in the spirit there's an overflow of the presence of God here lift your voice and just edify yourself in the spirit raise your voice raise your voice inside and outside following online there's an overflow of the presence of God in this place open your mouth and begin to pray in other tongues open your mouth and identify your spirit there's such a strong overflow of his presence shabarata ke baha soto monge beha siba meke prato ko siba hata ma bele ke praha siyamaka jembe reko to bambra hata kabash go ahead go ahead bahata pros ke te bemba sobron te bebe ka siba Jelebrete me prahata kaba sabaraka te boko siye potoya Mimba rahate beko suba lahate breke te bahas Jabarata breke te breke to si kabai Paul said I will pray with my spirit And I will pray with my understanding Si kapala te ke parate ke parusia Go ahead and edify yourself. Pray in the spirit. Building up yourself with your most holy faith. On your most holy faith, Paul, the Bible says, by praying in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit. My God, there's such an overflow tonight. There's such an overflow tonight. Parate Bacosia Embrecate Bacosica Palate Baracatias Marahate Kepa Suda Bahate Keba Mele Paporo Secete Barahatis Sheprahata Cabareketebas Impalacato Bossi Prahate Kebaba Sheke Parata Cabalia Catama Ibra kate boko si ke breke patis, she ke paraka si kaba. Open your mouth and edify yourself. Open your mouth and pray in the language of the spirit. Build up your most holy faith. Parate se ke da ha parate. Reach out to him tonight. Reach out to him tonight. Reach out to him tonight. Marahate ke soborokote, leprete baraka soto bronde ke ba, she ke baraka te ke barakosi, e baraka te ke bo soto rokobos, e ke borokosi ke borokobos, e ke baraka te la ka baraka te bo soto bohosi, e ke bakaria ka te ba koso rokobos. Eke basa kapala katea, merka para ka soto rogobosia. E mara soto mereko toske beba, e mereke te pa kosi e ke barakata. Ila pas ke babasos, e ke peruko se ke te barahas, e ke parus ke ti la mahaka brande. Me preke te kosi kapala, ke balakta te ke boros soto re me ke te. E parakate borokosi e ke bereke bos E parakate ke bos kotobokos Perus kapada brande ke te bos Me preke te berokosia E parakate laba The heavens are open The heavens are open E ke basuto rokobosia E ke lebrohos e ke leboros Jeda mahate ke mamoso, lebere kusuto bronde, brahanda bakasia. There's a move of God in this place tonight. There's a move of God in this place tonight. Someone is about to be revived. Someone is about to be changed. Someone's life is about to experience a turnaround. Your destiny is about to experience a supernatural shift. Shebarata, reach out to him. 
60 more seconds reach out to him marahate kebros kotobo sikabande embele koprate mrandos koponde mimbrahate ke daman sopoto kila parakate ke skoponde mimbre koskopoda shapanda prate ke sko apagrate krete koskopolonde zebrembe membre kete pakoske pa parahate as In Jesus name. Two more prayer points and we are seated tonight. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 20. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. I beg to say. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 21. Then the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. By the word of the Lord. God appeared in Shiloh. But he was only revealed to one person. He appeared in the place of his temple. But he only revealed himself to one person. The Bible says that the Lord revealed himself to Samuel. When God reveals himself to you, he manifests his glory. He manifests himself in, a, in an encounter that changes your perspective of him. I'd like you to pray tonight and say, Lord, appear tonight in this place and reveal yourself to me through the ministry of your word in the name of Jesus. Appear in this place tonight and reveal yourself to me by the ministry of your word. Lift your voice and cry to him in the name of Jesus. Somebody pray. I can't hear you pray. Believers, lift your voice and pray. Reveal yourself to me as you did to Samuel. Reveal yourself to me as you did in Shiva. Reveal yourself to me. Mahaprate Kebrahates. Ebrande de costa bela papa bados ne papreta papa 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 name we pray the bible says in psalms 110 verse 3 in king james translation it says thy people shall be willing in the day of your power these seven super sundays are the days of his power upon us from the first week i've seen god do marvelous things every sunday is almost unpredictable now i'd like you to pray and say lord and ask him for one thing that you want him to do before this seven super Sundays is over. Say, Lord, visit me and do this for me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't hear you. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to him. E brab de cabra taba scabella baba baba rusa pelota e shapa pam de cura baba silava hade baba rada baba de bega 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 and don't post up and brought a cabba and brought a baba and shop a bar and baba bar and the cup of baba the bigger 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Wave your hands to the King of Kings and give him praise. Wave your hands and bless. Wave your hands and bless him. Magnify him. Open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and bless his name. Open your mouth and give him glory. Blessed be your name. Father, tonight we hand over this service to you. We are here for you and we ask that you do what only you can do move in such a mighty way that we will not recover let your name be glorified by the ministry of your word impact us with wisdom with understanding and with power let no life remain the same in Jesus mighty name we pray shout that amen like you know you are victorious now clap your hands and give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please hug one, two, three persons beside you and tell them tonight is your night.
stand up on your feet hug two three persons anybody that is not standing up is not ready to receive walk up to two three persons and say tonight is your night hallelujah please be seated in the presence of the Lord amen somebody shout amen, amen. I said shout a louder amen, amen. all right go ahead and clap your hands and give him praise amen amen glory to jesus the bible declares that we are more than conquerors how many of you believe that the bible declares that he has given us the victory in christ jesus that's the reason why we shout and we praise him in his presence you know that you are victorious you know that you are more than a conqueror and tonight God will surprise us in Jesus name it's important that you discern every meeting don't get used to the presence of God don't think that what you saw last Sunday is the is the highest you will ever see and because of that you come to God's presence expectant and your expectations will show through your display of excitement is that true the Bible says with joy we will draw waters from the well of salvation so your expectation is shown through your display of excitement because you believe that God will do something that only he can do in your life and he will take the glory in Jesus name are we ready for today this is number what now? Number five of the seven Super Sundays. Many of you know that number five represents grace. Number five represents abundance. How many of you know that? That means you are ready to receive an abundance of grace. Abba. Now, for the sake of theologians, I know there are many of them here. Is it not Romans chapter 5 that speaks of we receiving the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness by which we reign with Christ? Uh -huh. According to theology, the fifth dispensation is the dispensation of grace. And so I know what I'm saying. Don't look at me and, and start. Though we have some Pharisees in this place. Born again Pharisees. I told somebody that they are, they are called Pharisees because they see things but from far. Amen. But it's not enough for you to see from afar. You have to be where the action is. So how many of you are ready to receive an abundance of grace tonight? Mm -hmm. I apologize for the sound of my voice today. I caught a cold yesterday. You know, God has blessed us with cars, beautiful cars. Say amen. I'm talking the other way. Hey, before you say, ah, when Apostle buy car, you don't, you don't tell me. No, they are consultants like that. Please work on this sound. Huh? Please. Let's intercede for them too so that they can get it because that sound is, is disturbing me. Amen. Oh, by the way, we just we bought our mixer. Yes. Yeah. Two weeks ago, actually. I was just so in the mood for yesterday. Last Sunday, I was so... You know, in the prophetic that I forgot to announce to you that our mixer had arrived two weeks ago. So, that's what we are trying to get used to. Say amen. 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 So, I caught a cold. I went somewhere in the evening and, you know, when you, when you have car, you are exposed to dust. Amen. So, I was exposed to some dust and then uh, had some cold. Um... But I think by the grace of God, I'll be able to preach tonight. 
it means somebody's life is about to change today. Amen. Amen. So let me make a few announcements before we get into the word. I'm going to teach something very simple on a very popular subject. And then we're going to take time to pray and see what God intends to do. Uh, first of all, like I made the announcement last week, um, those of you that will want to partner with us for the bus project, you are welcome. You want to put in your resources to see that we are able to transport people every now and then for our services. I hope you can hear me, please, because my voice is really terrible, but God will help me. Amen. So you are, you are welcome. Uh, in case you want to partner with us for that, please just at any point in the service, walk up to the public relations stand at the back of the auditorium. Uh, those of you that are outside, the stand is inside. As soon as you come in through the main door, it's by your right. So at any time in the service or after the service, you can walk up to the public relations stand. They would um, tell you what to do and then um, ensure that you are able to be part of that. Say amen to that. Amen. Then um, uh, if you notice this ahead so that we can pray and prepare first of all in the month of may i announced about a month ago that we'll be having um, a worship and prayer meeting yes so it's going to be happening in the month of may i thought you would shout better amen yes so it will happen in the month of may um 24th of may that's a friday so uh, make sure you keep the date on your calendar those of you that go to work from morning till 6 p.m make sure you take permission that day to close by 12 so you can go home and rest and be prepared i don't know if we are going to have it as an all night or an evening program which one do you prefer You go come. If you are going to be here, say amen. amen. Oh. So all night it is then. <laughs> all right. So 24th of May, 9 p.m. till dawn is going to be. Yes. It's going to be a night of praise, of worship, of prayer. We want to raise an incense for God on behalf of this land and we trust God that with it will come miracles, signs and wonders. Amen? Amen. And uh, by the grace of God, by next week we'll give you other details but hopefully the venue will be here by the grace of God. So uh, please save that day 24th and prepare. We're going to be here. We'll have seasoned music ministers that will bless us uh, both within and without and uh, we'll trust God for an exciting time. So please save the date and help us uh, publicize the, the meeting online. Put the flyer on your status and tell everyone around that we're going to have that meeting by the grace of God. Amen. And then um, this will probably be our first um, outreach program outside of the city of Beiduguri. God has spoken to me and by the grace of God somewhere between the end of June and the second week of July we are going to have a crusade in the city of Biu. Amen. Are you excited about that? Yes, yeah, so we'll be going to Bill, Bruno State. How many of you are from Haul? Haul. Weda, Bill, Shani, Kwayakusa, all of those places. Uh -huh. So we'll be having a crusade, Bill, Glory, Invasion. Um, yes. Now, for the past one year, we have been doing everything we can to go there. All right, but there's been some little resistance here and there. But you know, anytime 
you are undertaking the kingdom assignment of that magnitude, you will definitely be met with resistance and it's a good sign. Amen. So God has mandated us by force that we must go there. Uh, so probably by next month, we'll let you know the exact date, but it's going to be between the end of June and the middle of July. Two days, power-packed meeting, and then we'll have one morning session for ministers, for leaders, and businessmen and women. I think that, that, I think that the southern part of Borno State is ripe for a harvest. Is that true? Now, how many of you are from that area, that axis? Please wave your hand. Let me see. Don't deny it. Can you do something for me? Can you do something for us? Okay, so pay attention here. Yeah. Now we are going to your own place. So you must be involved. Number one, by praying for us. Number two, please feel free to call our public relations line anytime. And let us know how best you can be of help to us. Probably you have houses there that some of our team, because we'll go with some people, uh, some of our team can stay. Uh, um, you have a venue there that we can use because we'll, we'll have to look for a sizable venue. Um, any other thing that you think you can do to be of help to us, please let us know. Call the public relations line anytime and talk to them about this, please. We'll need your support. We'll need your help. Of course, you know that acceptance can be possible in a place when um, it's coming from a son or daughter of the soil. Is that true? And some of you who live there, you can even travel and be there during that period. Some of you who are students, I pray that there is a vacation by that time so that uh, we can all meet there. It's going to be a mighty, mighty meeting, all right? The last time I was in Bill was 2018. So it's, it's more than right for us to return back there. When we were there, all the prophecies that we spoke by the help of the Holy Spirit about that land has come to pass. So it's time to go and consolidate the work. So by next week, I'll give you more concrete details about that meeting. So do well to pray, intercede, talk to your people over there, and um, let us know how best you can be of help and be part of it. I'm speaking not only to those of us here on site, but I'm also speaking to those following online, perhaps even those that may be following from Bill. Uh, we will need volunteers that will help out for many things. And as you do so, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Maybe next year we'll have SGNI in view. Amen. You that shouted hallelujah, will you go and pastor the, the branch? <laughs> Let's get to the word. Are you set? And I hope I didn't forget. Okay. All right, and then 30 nights of supernatural favor is still on. If you are clapping, clap. Amen. We have three nights to go. Tonight, Monday, and Tuesday. There's also going to be an anointing service. We're going to pray and anoint ourselves. It's going to be powerful. If not for, if not for our network around here, we wanted to make make it more like a service on the last day uh, but well, very soon, a time will come very soon where we'll, we'll get all those facilities uh, so we can do that so make sure that you are part of this meeting, 12 midnight to 1 a.m. do everything you can to be awake, say amen. amen and your life will experience supernatural favor in Jesus name amen. let's get to the word, working in the supernatural part 2 Walking in the Supernatural, part two. All right, and I, I just remembered this announcement too. Please forgive me for that. Um, our media department is open for recruitment. Uh, those of you that want to join the media department, please do well after the service to just walk up to their stand, which is behind, or walk up to anybody you see wearing this T-shirt. SGNI Media. Can we celebrate God for this beautiful set of people? Amen. 
while you are here enjoying the service, they are doing a lot of work behind. Okay? You see these people standing with the camera, they stand for hours. So we really appreciate what they are doing and um, it's time for us to have more members there. So if you are here, you want to be part of the department, you are welcome. Please walk up to their stand after the service and you'll be told what to do. And it's open to both male and female. Say amen. Yes. Uh -huh. Even female can carry camera too. Abi? Uh -huh. It's not only kunui that you can do now. Uh -huh. All right, let's get to the word. Some of you, you will not, you, your ears cannot hear all those kind of things. Are you set tonight? Give God a big shout of praise. Amen. Walking in the supernatural part two, the place of prayer. The place of prayer. I'll, I'm going to try to be as simple as possible. Um, it's not really that you hear something new, but that a fire for prayer will be ignited in your spirit tonight. And grace will come upon your, your life forever. That's the reason tonight. So I'll try to be as simple as I can, and then uh, so we just flow. And it's going to be one of my shortest sermons ever. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 56, verse 6 to 7. Also, the sons of the foreigner who joined themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant. He's talking about us now. Because by this time, Jesus had not come. So, this scripture is referring to the Gentiles, which we all are. Any nation apart from Israel were referred to in the Bible as Gentiles. So, Isaiah was prophesying about the extension of salvation that will come to the Gentiles, which we are. And to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath... And holds fast my covenant. I wish I had time to really explain that verse. Maybe that's a teaching for another day. Because when he was talking about Sabbath, he was not talking about literal. As it applies to us now, he was not talking about literal Sabbath day. Literally, he was talking about the Sabbath. But as it applies to us, it has nothing to do with the Sabbath day. Alright? Because Jesus came and uh, gave us a better understanding of the Sabbath. But let's go to the verse of emphasis, verse 7. Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. I want you to beat your chest. And said, my body, my life is a house of prayer. You believe that? My house shall be called a house of prayer. So prayer is not only necessary for the believer. It is perhaps the culture the culture of Christianity is rooted in a life of prayer. It's something we can't do without. It's something you can't survive without. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. Please, still work on this. You're, you're still? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and, and shout it again. Shout it as a believer. He often withdrew himself and prayed. As busy as Jesus was, he always created time. You would have discovered that we live in a very busy world you almost will not have time for anything important or anything meaningful. 
you have to create time. I hear what I'm saying. If you wait to have time to pray, you may not have that time. Some of you, your jobs alone consume between 8 to 12 hours of your time every day. And then you have time to sleep. You're welcome back. You, have, you need time to rest and then family and all of that. So you would realize that in life, for you to be able to do the important things, you would have to create time. Now, Jesus was a very busy man. Of course, at the time that Jesus existed, there was no one who walked in the power and the wisdom and the grace of God like Jesus. It's not like now that you have several apostles, several prophets, several pastors. At that time, Jesus was the only one. He was the only apostle. The Bible calls him the apostle of our commission. He was the only prophet, the teacher. The, he was everything. So, and they didn't have social media, so Jesus could not strip, uh, stream his service live. So if you needed to see Jesus, you had to be in Israel. And that was why everywhere went to crowd would follow him. So Jesus was a very busy man, attending to people day and night. But the Bible says in verse 16 that despite his busy schedule, he often will withdraw himself, or withdraw himself to pray, to commune with God. To spend time with God. The Bible did not give us prayer points there. That's because prayer is first of all a culture for the believer. It's supposed to be a lifestyle for the believer. It's the place where the believer draws strength from his communion with God. Prayer is what increases your confidence and builds your faith as a believer. That confidence you have in God that makes you go through life with a victorious mindset is generated in the place of prayer. When people are faced with situations, with crises around their life, the way they react and the way they respond to this situation can tell the health of their prayer life. I was talking with somebody today, um, a dear lady who is close to me, working in one of the government um, parastatals in Abuja. So she was posted to an office, I guess a big position. And she said that one of the first few days when she got to the office, she sat down on the chair of the person she took over from. And... Um, she felt a prompting in her spirit to stand up. And while she was checking, she discovered there was charm under the chair. When she told me I laughed, I said, that's welcome on board. And what made me laugh more was that uh, she told me she had to go on a one month prayer and fasting to be able to dislodge what is there. I said that was unnecessary trauma. When prayer becomes a lifestyle, there are certain things that by default, certain levels of provision, by default are allocated to you. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. From verse 3 down, it tells you everything that is obtainable. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 10 is even more powerful. He said, no evil shall befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. I said it was uncalled for. So, but the reason why you went on that fast was because the moment you saw that, there was fear in you. And that fear is an absence of faith that is ruggedly built in the place of prayer. Jude said, build up your most holy faith by praying. Every time you respond in fear to a situation, it shows you the health of your prayer life. It shows you that your prayer life is down. Because if you have a prayer life that keeps you intact with God 247, there is no place for fear to be entertained. If you take away prayer from a believer, he doesn't even have the right to be called a believer. It's part of us. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. So Jesus understood this. 
And you know why, why I read from the book of Luke is because I took time to study. I have read probably every year. I studied the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again and again. Because anything I want to understand, I try to look at it uh, through the lens of Jesus' life and ministry. For instance, if I'm studying about wisdom, I have to look at Jesus' life first and look, look at what he said about wisdom before looking at the epistles, going to the Old Testament and all of that. So I took time to study Jesus from all the Gospels to see how each Gospel presented Jesus and what was spoken about his life and ministry. And there's something peculiar about the Gospel of Luke. There were two things revealed in the Gospel according to Luke that became the reason for why Jesus commanded supernatural results. There were two things that stood out in the book of Luke that were the pillars upon which Jesus' life and ministry succeeded. Number one was his identity. The book of Luke gives us a clear definition of the identity of Jesus. First of all, that Jesus was a son of God. You see that in Luke chapter 3, after the baptism of Jesus, from verse 23 down to the end of that chapter, it was able to trace Jesus' genealogy down to God. In, in the book of Matthew, can I continue? I'm sorry about my voice, okay? In the book of Matthew, you also find a genealogy in chapter 1. But that genealogy was only to uh, give an oversight or give a concise uh, documentary of Jesus' earthly ancestry. So Jesus was traced to David, to Abraham. Is that true? But in Luke, it traced Jesus' genealogy to God. The end of the book of Luke chapter 3, it says, And Adam was the son of God. And remember that the baptism in Jordan there in the same Luke chapter 3, a voice spoke from heaven, This is my beloved son. So Jesus had a revelation of his identity, that he was the son of God. And that was why in chapter 4, he was able to overcome the devil's temptation. In the same chapter 4, another side of Jesus' identity was revealed. The Bible says that when he, when he got to the temple, a scroll of Isaiah was given to him. And he read from the place that said, the Bible says he found where it was written. You find because you search for something. And remember that the Bible says, as was his custom, in verse 16. It says, as was his custom, he went to the synagogue. So that means Jesus had always gone there and probably they will call him to read. But every day as he looked through the scrolls of the law and the prophets, he kept looking for the passage that captured his identity. Because one of the basic revelations that a believer needs to excel and to live a victorious life is an accurate understanding of your identity in Christ. If you don't know who you are, you'll be denied access many times to many places. If you don't know who you are, you will become afraid of almost anything, including the things that you have authority over. If you are here, say amen. amen. So, uh, Jesus, is ha Jesus had that understanding. Sorry about that. Jesus had that understanding and he found in Isaiah where it was written, the Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me and you know the end of that scenario. And he read it, closed the book and gave it to them in verse 20 and he told them that today this scripture is fulfilled. So I have found and discovered the identity that fits my assignment. And I don't have time to talk about the revelation of his identity all through the book of Luke. But another thing that was the reason for Jesus' success in life and ministry that was captured in the book of Luke is his prayer life. In fact, the book of Luke is the book that gives you the 
largest account of prayer as it concerns the life and ministry of Jesus. So let me give you a brief chapter to chapter um, uh, 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 summary. In chapter 1 of Luke, the Bible says, I believe in verse 11, 10 or 11 thereabout, that Zechariah was offering incense in the temple and the whole uh, congregation were praying outside. And then an angel appeared to Zechariah and told him, your prayer has been heard. And that was what led to the, the birth of John the Baptist. Of course, you know that John the Baptist came as a forerunner of Jesus. Now, in chapter 2, the Bible says it speaks of two people that were instrumental in the place of prayer and intercession for the birth of Jesus. They were Simeon. The Bible spoke about Simeon. He prayed so much that God promised him that you will not die until you see the Messiah. The Bible spoke about another woman, Anna. Anna the prophetess. She was not from a tribe that had prophets. She was from the tribe of Asher. But when she lost her husband in her young age, the Bible says she gave herself to prayer and fasting. And when I did my calculation, I discovered that she prayed and fasted for 52 years for the coming of Jesus. So it took two people many years of intercession to birth the Savior that you and I profess today. In chapter 3, when Jesus was at the baptism of John, of course the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 that there are three that bears witness on, on, in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. When that scripture was talking about what happened at the baptism of Jordan. Because the Bible says... While Jesus was praying, you see the place of prayer now, that the heavens were open and the Spirit of God descended on him as a dove. That's witness number one. And he heard a voice, which is God, spoke to him. What did God speak? The word. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That only happened because after the baptism, Jesus prayed. So he prayed himself into that encounter and that became the endorsement for his ministry. That means if Jesus had not prayed while he was there, nothing would have happened. In chapter 4, Jesus went into the wilderness praying and fasting and he overcame the temptations of the devil. And the Bible says in verse 14, he returned in the power of the spirit. In chapter 5 verse 16, he will often withdraw himself to pray. In chapter 6 verse 12, Jesus prayed and he prayed all night and all night in Jewish timing was 12 hours. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And when he finished, he came and chose amongst his disciples those who will become the 12 apostles. Can I go on? In chapter, this is chapter 6, right? In chapter 9, Jesus took three disciples, went on the mountain. As he was praying, the Bible says he was transfigured. He changed. He, he had an encounter that brought about a physical transformation. And the Bible says that Elijah and Moses appeared to him and they spoke to him about his disease in Jerusalem. Now, many of you will not understand this or many of you will feel that this is heresy, but this is the truth. When Jesus was on earth, yes, he was 100% God and 100% man, but Jesus had to depend on the Holy Spirit for knowledge and for wisdom. Jesus was not operating the omniscience dimension of God. He didn't know everything. That's why he said, that which I see my father do, I do. He said, the son can do nothing except that which he sees the father do. That's why Jesus will pray much. So that in the place of prayer, the Holy Spirit will reveal to him what God wants him to do. And then he will step out to do it. So in that place of prayer, when he had the encounter with Elijah and Moses, they were the ones who now told him that what you will suffer will happen in Jerusalem. If he had missed that encounter by prayer, he would have gone to Galilee and think that the passion will happen in Galilee. Are you here? No, you are not here. Because if you are here, you would, you would have reacted to what I just said. Fast forward to chapter 10. Jesus sent 70 disciples. They came back and in verse 17, they said, Master, even the demons were subject to us in your name. Jesus said, you know why it happened like that? 
in verse 18 he said i saw satan fall from lightning and as i will soon show you the place of prayer is the place of revelation the reason why jesus saw was because when he sent them remember in chapter 10 verse 1 the bible says he sent these 70 disciples to cities that he will go so while he sent them he stepped into the place of intercession and prayer that's one of the secrets to taking a territory whether you are going there to plant a church or to start a business or you got an employment or you got a new house and you are going to stay there make sure you enter with the protocol of prayer some of you rent houses and you don't know the cows that they sacrifice and buried in the house you don't know who they killed there you don't know the amount of immorality that happened there and then the spirits that have been hosted there by human actions and activities you just enter a new house and start snapping picture only for you to discover that for two weeks now you've been having nightmares that's the reason why we dedicate houses just like when i go back today there's a house i will dedicate for somebody overseas they just bought a house they say I, they will do video call i must dedicate the house this is the understanding so Jesus told them the reason why Satan, the demons were subject was because they are august Satan in the place of prayer. I was able to bring him down. And so the demons were defenseless and weak. You see, when you have struck the strong man, it becomes easy to spoil the goods. That's another revelation of prayer. Chapter 11 from verse 1. He was praying at a certain place and at a certain time. And when he was finished, the disciples came and said, teach us to pray and he taught them the power of persistence in prayer chapter 18 he taught them a parable to this wise that men ought always to pray and not to faint verse 1 chapter 19 verses 46 Jesus told them my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have turned it to a den of thieves chapter 21 verse 36 Jesus said even when the rapture will come he said pray watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape that escape was the rapture because Jesus was talking about what will happen in the end times that means that as we approach the rapture one of the things that will facilitate its coming is the heated ministry of prayer from the church I wish I had time chapter 22 even the night before he will be crucified he was in the garden praying. He prayed till his sweat became drops of blood. Chapter 24, when he appeared to them and he was about to ascend to heaven, he told them in verse 49, he said, but tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And that tarry took them 10 days. Because in Acts chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible says that they continued steadfastly in prayers and supplication. Verse 14 thereabout. So you see, you, from the book of Luke, you will examine the concentration of prayer galvanized into the life and ministry of Jesus. In fact, you need to be prayerful when studying scripture to identify this. You will now discover that this was one of Jesus' strongest secret to why he finished and he finished well. So, Prayer, therefore, becomes very important as far as walking in the supernatural and commanding extraordinary results is concerned as a believer. Let's proceed. What is prayer? Number one. Number one. Prayer is God's system that both initiates and executes change on the earth realm. God's system that both initiates and executes change on the earth realm. And I want to explain that. Prayer is God's system that both initiates and executes change on the earth it is the word of god that creates change it is words that create change but as far as initiating and executing the change is concerned it will have to be prayer before god will speak because god's speakings most times will be in response to the activity of men 
for God to speak in a family, in a territory, in a nation, there will have to be an activity of prayer that has initiated God into the sin, bringing his voice over that matter. That's why I say prayer is a system of God that initiates. And then even after God has spoken, for what God has said to be executed, it will take the law enforcement agency of prayer. That is why you don't go and sleep when they give you a prophetic word. That's when your prayer begins. Of course, you receive it with joy. But that's when prayer starts. Because you first of all need to pray yourself into the wisdom of that prophecy. To know how to be positioned. There are many things in the kingdom that comes not by... How do I put this now? There are many things in the kingdom that will come to you on on the basis of your being positioned it was because Ruth was positioned that was why she met Boaz and got married let me say it again because many of you you, you were just distracted so let me come back again I wonder why you will be distracted you came here to hear something are you here? Not everything in the kingdom you will receive because God gave it to you or because of the deployment of God's power. No. There are some things you receive by just being positioned. There are people in scripture that received certain things not because God wanted them to receive it but because they were rightly positioned. Rahab was one of them. Now there is a wisdom to being rightly positioned. You see, we didn't even have time these 30 nights to pray on favor. I wanted to, I would have taken you through the favor for divine positioning. Sometimes you need to be at the right place at the right time. Sometimes your prayers will warrant that God will move you from one place to another. If Elijah was not praying enough, he would not have tapped into the power of positioning. And that was what sustained him during the famine. Because as soon as he gave the word to the king, said there will be no rain or dew for three and a half years except by my word. God told him, I hope you know this word will affect you too. He said, now get up from here and go to the brook chariot and hide yourself. Position him. And when he went there, ravens gave him bread and meat and he drank from the brook. Then sometimes later, the brook finished. Because you see, God's system of favor is, is, is translational in the life of a believer. The, active, the, the workings of divine systems in your life is almost always allocated to divine timings. That is why don't struggle. There are some relationships that God brought to your life and they serve a purpose. But after some time, not because you did anything bad, all of a sudden, the person is not talking to you. They are ghosting you. They feel they are big enough and all of that. Don't try to fight to hold on to that relationship. What is happening to you now is translation. The power of positioning. God needs to take out some people to bring in some people. Because when the brook got dried up, Elijah thought that was all that God could do. God spoke to him and said, position him. Get up from here and go to Zarephath. I've commanded a widow to sustain you. So sometimes you will need to pray yourself into the wisdom of a prophecy. And the first thing it will activate is the power of positioning. You will know when to move. You will know when to stand up. You will know who to go and meet. If God says he will do something for you, you should know that the answers that God gives to you are embodied in men and earthly systems. But you need to meet the men or the systems at the right place at the right time. So when we say that prayer initiates and executes, when God has spoken, that's when you begin praying. So as you pray, the wisdom for positioning is, is, is released. Your prayer begins to attract the people to you that will fulfill that particular word, that mandate. So many things that happens when we pray. That's why I said God's system, prayer is God's system that both initiates and executes change on the earth realm. Number two, popular one you all know. Prayer is the earthly license for heavenly interference. 
Prayer is the earthly license for heavenly interference or intervention. This was a statement made by Dr. Miles Monroe of Blessed Memory. It's the earthly license for heavenly interference. That means if you want to bring heaven into a matter, what do you do? Pray. Jesus taught them a parable to this wise that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Because it's prayer that keeps open the door to the supernatural. It is prayer that invites God into an issue. It is prayer that commands the forces of heaven over a matter, over a case. So earth will need to, of course, we know that the God we serve is a God that can do as he please. But you see, God is a God of order and protocol. God has kept man to have dominion over the earth. That means before God can do anything purposeful on earth, he would need to walk through the system of men. And one of the law enforcement agencies of men is prayer. Every time God sees prayer, is an invitation to heaven. And if you are not praying in your family, someone else is praying to another God. Someone else is praying to another spirit. Someone else is inviting, whether you like it or not, this earth, for you to survive and thrive on this earth, you will need to understand the language of priesthood. It's not a difficult word. It's only difficult for Christians who have refused to grow, who are lazy. Priesthood is fundamental for believers. It's either you are exercising your priesthood to invite God into your family or someone else is doing it. And if you know how Satan is hell-bent on his mission to steal, kill, and destroy, half a chance is enough for him. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Number three, what is prayer? Prayer is the procedure that permits divine legislature on the earth. Prayer is the procedure that permits divine legislature on earth. There are three arms of government. What are they? The judiciary, the legislative, and the executive. The legislative arm of government are those saddled with the responsibility of making laws. So you hear of National Assembly, State House of Assembly, somebody will initiate a bill. Let us do this and this and this and let it become a law in Nigeria. Let it become a law in Borno State. And when he passed the first, second, I think there are three hearings. When he passed the third hearing, it is signed as a bill into law. It becomes part of the constitution of Nigeria. It becomes a law. You that is in the village that didn't know when they signed it into law, ignorance is not an excuse. That law will govern you. So prayer is the procedure that permits divine legislature for us to rule and reign on earth, for us to walk in dominion on earth, for us to live and enjoy all that God has for us on earth and to fulfill our God-given divine mandate. We need to practice the procedure that occasions divine legislature. The laws of God will need to be enforced. We need to be created. God will need men that are highly anointed by his spirit who through the place of prayer will be able to decree laws that will govern the operation of society, govern the operation of creation. Let me show you something. In Job chapter 22, verse 28, it's a popular scripture. Ye shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. Isn't it? When the law is spoken, it is called a decree. When a king speaks, it is called a law, a decree. Now, the reason why you can decree a thing that's King James now. The reason why you get decree a thing and it will be established, go to verse 24. Let's read from verse 24 down. Let me show you how prayer is behind divine decrees that comes through the children of God. He said, Then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offering as the stones of the brooks. Go on. Yeah, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Go on. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty. And shall lift up thy face unto God. That is prayer now. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. And because he has heard your prayer. What will happen in the next verse? Thou shalt also decree. So if you want to see your words established. 
if you want to speak and experience the power of the spoken word if you want to create your own realities on earth that process is called divine legislature you will need to master the place of prayer it is only prayerful men that their words are decrees that their words are laws when they speak in the realm of the spirit spirit agencies and spirit beings come to attention because a man on account of his prayer has grown to a level of stature with God his prayer has made him interact with the Holy Ghost so much that when he speaks the angels don't know whether it is Jesus that is talking or a man because prayer has brought him to a point of intimacy where he has become one in reality with Jesus so when he speaks his word will become law the Bible speaks of the angels in Psalms 103 verse 20. The Bible says they give heed to the voice of his word. And I always will say that the voice of the word of God is the church. We are the ones that give voice to his word. God spoke and nothing happened to the dry bones. But he told the prophet, he said prophesy to them and say this, this, this. And when the prophet prophesied, the bones responded. Because we are the ones that give voice to his word. If you don't understand this, the devil will create his own decrees and laws in your life. How does he do it? By bringing negative thoughts into your mind. Every time a negative thought is, is, is planted in your mind, is a seed the enemy has sowed. It's the, it's the devil's decree. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. What he wants to try to do is condition your mind to believe something that is false as a reality, as truth. And then you begin to speak based on that false belief. And it definitely becomes your reality. There are people who headache catch them once. The second time they had the headache, they say, my headache. And that's why for the last 10 years, they always have headaches. Is that true? If you have said that, you have to denounce it this night. Some of us brought afflictions on ourselves because we personalized it. And I said something last week. I said, when you speak, you place ownership on something say my headache so satan say hey god you heard him he say my headache so but it changes today Amen. i said it changes today Amen. i said it is reversed today Amen. number four what is prayer a supernatural activity sponsored by the holy ghost prayer is a supernatural activity sponsored by the holy ghost Romans 8, 26 to 27, For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be altered. You cannot practice or perform prayer outside of the help of the Holy Spirit. You'll be praying by the strength of the flesh and it will not carry any weight. Somebody say, but Apostle, are you trying to say that if you don't pray for long? No, praying, praying, help, prayer that is helped by the Holy Spirit is not necessarily a long or short prayer. It has to do with the level of faith that is involved. And that has to do with the connection of your heart. How long was Jesus' prayer when he raised Lazarus from the dead? From the dead. Uh -huh. That's his connectivity now. So for prayer to be powerful, it has to be sponsored by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power side of God. is the life of God. His job is mainly empowerment. He comes to strengthen everything that is of the God kind. Everything that is of the God class. Everything that is produced of God. So when you pray by the help of the Holy Spirit, your prayer carries power. It opens the door into the supernatural. The Bible says we don't even know what to pray for as we ought. But the spirit makes intercession by groanings that cannot be altered. In another translation, it says inarticulate speech. What we call praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in the Holy Ghost for five minutes, the Holy Spirit can address 91 prayer points at one go. Why? Because it was sponsored by the Holy Ghost. So it is a supernatural activity sponsored by the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4 that he that prays 
in an unknown tongue edifies himself so this is as the holy spirit helps you in prayer the first thing that happens is that there is an engineering of strength inside of you that process of prayer begins to build you up it begins to recharge you it begins to strengthen you it generates supernatural energy from your inside in verse 15 paul said in that same first corinthians 14 he said what is it then i will pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing because he understands the importance of your prayer being sponsored by the ministry of the holy spirit you need his help to pray to know what to pray to know how to pray to know how to go about issue many people have prayed over an issue that was revealed to them and they did not see their prayer answer not because god's ears are deaf but maybe because their prayer lacked spirit guidance spirit direction spirit energizement yes and if you keep practicing that kind of prayer you will have so many uh, um, disaster happen around you and satan will push you to believe that there's no power in prayer not when the holy ghost is with you in fact when prayer is sponsored by the holy spirit you can diagnose situations by prayer you can diagnose a, situ a situation that you think needs healing it's actually deliverance that it needs it's prayer that diagnoses it prayer that is led by the spirit that's why sometimes as men of god when we hit an issue that we don't understand we tell them give me two or three days to go and pray one time i was talking with somebody i knew very well you know he's blessed he's in the military and he's been very he's been a very wonderful and a good person to me so there was a time in his life where things were not working you know the flow of blessing had cut off nothing was happening they were owing him money and all of that ah. so he called and said sir what do we do we need to pray please speak speak over our life and i wanted to as a man of god just declare and say and i did and nothing happened so he called again say sir up till now i said you know what wait let me pray i was in abuja then so i went in to pray that day and i sat down i just put the matter on my mind and i began to pray in tongues after about uh, close to an hour the holy spirit now spoke to me the holy spirit said if i tell you will you be able to tell him i said ah god you know i don't fear anybody i will tell nobody nobody's paying me i'll tell anybody the holy ghost say can you tell him i say i say i will the holy spirit say when he met you there was a covenant giving he was always doing to you and because of that it was opening doors for the last two years he stopped so the flow stopped i said oh boy this one had to talk oh. he came by prayer you know i would have prayed about that issue without the help of the holy spirit and i would have even me the man of god i would have missed it well i called him and told him i said oga no i didn't tell him i told his wife i said madam your husband so somehow you know women know how to she told him and then god too has been speaking to him since god just needed my voice to confirm then he sold hundred thousand and then less than three weeks later money that government was owing him for over one year they paid it at once so much that he was able to buy a house in another country amen and if you are here and you are like him you are in his class me i will not tell you you have heard it already <laughs> say amen to that amen. i knew a woman many years ago maybe she will watch but she will not even know she's the one her husband bought her a fine car at that time and that was the car raining for women and you know women you better be careful your attachment to material things i know you can pray but be careful your attachment to material things it's when it's time to part away with that thing that you will know how much of a god that thing has become god told her give your car to your pastor your pastor is careless it took her how many months it was a day to christmas months later 
She said Holy Ghost flogged her. She now ran to the pastor's house and gave the car. Let's get back to our teaching. We're not talking about giving. But I'm, I'm going to bring a teaching on giving in May. Just prepare. Amen. Let me give you some truths about prayer. And then we'll pray. Basic truths about prayer. Number one. We pray from the place of re relationship. We pray from the place of relationship. We pray from the place of relationship. So the confidence we have to pray is based on the relationship, the understanding of the relationship that we have with God. 1 John 5.14 says, This is the confidence that we have in him, that whatever we ask him according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15 says, and if we know that he hears us, we know that we have whatever we ask. Why? Because we know we are praying to a God that we call our Father. So prayer begins from the place of relationship. Jesus taught them to pray in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. He said, when you pray, pray this wise, saying, our Father. So we pray because we have a relationship with God. We pray because we have an understanding of our identity in Christ. That in Christ, God has made us sons of God. And a son is bold enough to ask the father anything. Jesus said, can a son ask the father for bread and he gives him stone? Can a son ask the father for fish and he gives him snake? If you are the one, you know go wrong. You ask the father for fish and he gives you snake. Say, my father is an idol worshiper. He's, he's the strong man that is holding our destiny. Or he asks for egg and he gives you scorpion. So the boldness that a son has to ask the father is because of the relationship he has. Now, as primary and as basic this is, it affects the template of your prayer life. If you ever pray lacking the consciousness of relationship with God, your prayer will have no power. There are people who pray and they don't see answers because up till today, they are still praying with the guilt in their heart that God has not forgiven them for what they did when they were in the world. So every time they approach God, they say, Father, you know I'm a sinner. You are not a sinner. Keep quiet. You are a child of God. Do you know what it means to be a sinner? A sinner means you are not born again. Say, Father, you know our righteousness are as filthy rags. That's your own righteousness, not my own. Because he made him who was without sin to be sin for us, that we will become the righteousness of God. Do you know what it means to be the righteousness of God? That means apart from you, there is nothing else that is right as per, as per God's standing, that we will become the righteousness of God. Bishop, come, let me explain it to you. That we will become, that's 2 Corinthians 5.21, that we will become the righteousness of God so bishop is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. As far as God is concerned, God's template or object of explaining righteousness is when you look at bishop. It's strange, isn't it? And that's the wonderful thing about salvation. Now, in his heart, he's thinking yesterday, he opened his wife's pot and ate meat without her knowledge. You see, I want you to labor to understand your identity in Christ. As basic as it is, as you grow high in God, there will be places that will demand. There are things that you learned in primary school that are relevant to your learning till today. There are people who, when they were writing Waek, they were interpreting the question to them through Hausa. You know why? Because their primary school, they didn't teach them well. So nothing is too basic in the faith. So another aspect, thank you, sir, is our identity in Christ Jesus, that we are sons of God. And because of that, we have access to the Father 
You don't need to go through anybody. Most people want to pray and they call their man of God. You have direct access. God does not have grandsons. He hears you. Just stop complaining. Start praying. He will hear you. So we pray from the place of relationship. Another aspect of that is our union with the Holy Ghost. That in Christ Jesus, God has made you one with the Holy Ghost. You see, there is an engineering that Satan does not understand. It is the fusion of the Holy Spirit and the human spirit. When you became born again, the Holy Spirit and your spirit became one inseparable entity. If you put milk inside water and mix it, especially if it's hot water, can you remove the milk out of it? If you put salt in the food, can you remove the salt from the food? That's what happened at new birth. The Holy Spirit became one with your spirit. So you can call your spirit the Holy Spirit. And you can call the Holy Spirit your spirit. But you see, you don't understand. That's why every time the Holy Spirit spoke through the voice of your spirit, you said something said. But the Bible says that the spirit beareth witness. Romans 8 from verse 14 to 16. As many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Verse 15, what does he say? Quickly, please. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption. You have been adopted into the family of God. By whom we cry out, Abba. Now, Abba means father in Hebrew. Why is he saying father, father? That's because there are two spirits speaking there. The spirit of God and your spirit in one. That's why the next verse says, that the spirit bears witness with our spirit. To bear witness means to speak. Crying, Abba, Father. Did you get that? So we have, you know, so the moment you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is praying already through you. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 27, that he that searcheth the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is. That he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, God is not looking at what you are saying. You have already switched into Holy Ghost mode. So God is seeing that it's the Holy Ghost that is praying. And he's searching the mind, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to answer you based on what the Holy Ghost is communicating. So if they told you that a witch is in your village responsible for what you are going through, what kind of prayer do you pray against them that will work? You don't know. So but as you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost now communicates to God and the Holy Ghost and God is one. The wisdom that is needed to be deployed to defeat that witch. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So number one, we pray from the place of relationship. Number two, prayer is the place of revelation. Prayer is the place of revelation. Revelation originates from relationship. If you don't pray beginning from the place of relationship, you can't enter into the infrastructure of revelation. Revelation is the disclosure of divine secrets to sons of God. God can only reveal things to his own, to his sons, to his children. Because he reveals by his spirit. And the spirit will only be able to communicate it to the one that carries his spirit. So, relationship is what sponsors revelation. In fact, the word, the word mystery in the Greek, in the New Testament, is from the Greek word mysterion. What it means is information that is given only to those who are initiated to a cult. You didn't get it. Some of you are sleeping. Me and you, who should be sleeping? Me that is praying every night, doing a supernatural. If you are sleeping now, there's a spirit sitting on you. <laughs> Believe me, you need deliverance right now. Because if we were playing a film now, you will not sleep. Yes or yes? And I cast every spirit of slumber now in the name of Jesus. Why will you be sleeping when wisdom is coming to change your life? There's a spirit. A spirit. I rebuke that spirit. 
Some of you is even ancestral spirit. Anytime you are in a place where you hear something that will change your life, check all your siblings or even your parents. Now, so all of them are going to sleep. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. You go back and do an interview, you will see it's true. Your brother, when he's in another place, hearing what will change, that's how he will sleep. He's in the family. I rebuke that ancestral spirit today. Amen. You know, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. So it's because you have a relationship with God that you can enter into revelation. The people of the world cannot experience revelation. It's a disclosure that is only made possible to those who are related with God, who carry the life of God. That's why Jesus prayed and said, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and revealed it to these ones, the babes. So, prayer is the place of revelation. It's in prayer that your spiritual senses will open. That's when you know that you have eyes that can see beyond these physical eyes. And I tell you the truth, you are limited if all you can see is through these physical eyes alone. There are sicknesses that are sponsored by spirits. There are afflictions in people that is just a spirit that is sitting there. There are people who cannot conceive and give birth. You know why? There's a spirit carrying their womb. It's not possible naturally, but it's possible in the spirit. That one now, even if you go for IVF or go for surrogacy, there is a spirit carrying. There are people who no matter what they do, they will always be poor because there's a spirit preying on their finance. So don't allow anybody which haunt you and say, oh, you are not practicing the principle. Mm, there are some poverty issues that are more than principle. A woman came to visit me a few years ago for counseling. She was among the people to counsel. And as soon as she entered the place for counseling, I saw a spirit like a monkey carrying her handbag. But she was carrying the handbag on her right hand. But I saw a spirit like a monkey carrying the bag. I said, this, this, a monkey is a mischievous animal. That means there's a spirit that waits for her to gather and then he scatters it. Can, 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 can uh, ultrasound pick a demon in your womb? These are things that you, it will take revelation. You need to have another eye. You need to have another ear. Jesus said, blessed are your eyes that see and your ears that hear. You need to have an ability to understand and comprehend what you are not taught. In the natural, they need to teach you something again and again before you understand. But in the realm of the spirit, understanding comes before knowledge. Yes. David said, I have more understanding than my teachers. Why? Because I meditate on your testimonies. What is testimonies? Testimonies are the things that God said about himself. So the place of prayer is the place of revelation. How many of you have experienced a season in your life where you have so many dreams and visions? It's almost as if if you close your eye to sleep, you see something. Check very well. You are prayerful in that season. What you have done by injecting prayer you have paid your subscription you know if you have dstv and you don't subscribe it's off so you have paid for your subscription so that's why they have opened up channels for you to watch so when you begin to have revelations dreams visions all kinds of spiritual impulse you know there are impressions and there are impulses spiritual impressions i'm doing a series on that on youtube school of the spirit uh, you go check it out spiritual impressions there are impressions and impulses impressions are visuals impulses are audio is like um you see this microphone receiver now this microphone i'm using is connected to a wireless system there they call it a receiver it has antennas those antennas have the ability to pick waves sound waves that you cannot see with your eyes but they are picking it from here that's why there's no wire but you are hearing me isn't it now it is in the place of prayer that your senses are activated to pick spiritual impulses there are waves that pass people pass families there are spiritual waves passing over families only for one person who is alive spiritually to pick it and bring that family to where they ought to be it takes prayer it takes prayer to get there you will need to sentence yourself to a life of prayer. The excuse that I'm tired is, 
there, there is no place for that. Some of us don't pray because you are not a man of God, you are not a woman of God, even the men of God, you know they support them, you know they give them, you know they pray for them, nothing. You, are, you don't even do you, What is your use in the kingdom? Nothing. But because you are not a man of God, you are not called, you are not in the ministry, that's why you feel there's no pressure on your life to pray. You wait until a man steps into your life. You know what it means to be spiritually at a lot, two, four, seven. In the night, somebody sends a text that another person is dying in, in somewhere. What do you do to arrest that situation? They can call you from somewhere and say, somebody stole something, apostle, who stole it? Am I there? Am I CCTV? But when you begin to speak in tongues, you can, you can time travel in the spirit to that place and say, eh, ask this person. Two people come to you, they are married, they don't have children. The husband is blaming the woman. Say, because now your past life, where you play now, you don't come out your womb. Then you begin to pray and the Holy Ghost shows you that there's a spirit of barrenness from the man's house affecting the woman. You th Sarah was not the one that was barren. It was Abraham that was barren. The spirit of barrenness was in his lineage. His father's name, you know, his father was an idol worshiper to a point where his father's name was the name of an idol, Terra. Go and check the meaning of that name. When God called Abraham from Mesopotamia, say, leave your father's house and everything and come to a land, I'll show you. Abraham carried his father, the source of his problem. Because it was when Terra was 70 years that he started having children. All the people before Terra, if you read the genealogy of Seth, that is something to the something, they will have children. Terra waited till 70 years because there was a spell of barrenness that the God he was serving had casted on him. And Abraham carried the source of his problem and thought that was his support system. There are many of you that carry people around your life thinking that these are the people that will support and help you, not knowing that the atmosphere they carry, it's not about them, but they are carrying wrong spiritual atmospheres around them. That is the channel of your problem. But because you came here tonight, my God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, every wrong atmosphere around your life, may my God arrest it this night. May God arrest it this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Carried the source of his problem. He didn't know why God said, leave your father's house. He carried him. He went to, his father now led him to a place called Haran. And they now waited there. When his father died in Haran, God spoke to him again. In chapter 12 verse 1. Now God had said to Abraham, when I did the calculation, Abraham was 35 years when God called him to leave his father's house. So God would have adverted the issue of barrenness on time. But lack of revelation. Abraham went with his father. His father now directed him to, to Haran. Say, oh boy, that place where God, this is your God. We know no more. That place, oh, go kill you. That's what they call it. Poverty. Say, come, oh, go this place. And then he took him there. And I calculated according to biblical history. They spent 40 years in Haran. Then the source of the delay died. That's when God, that's why God called Abraham at 75. Chapter 12, Abraham was 75. It was not God's wish that Abraham would have waited a hundred years. It was lack of revelation. You better use prayer this night. Thank you, sir. And begin to scan and screen every relationship. Sometimes what is delaying you from entering the next season? There are some weights some strange people they are no longer com compatible with where you are going to they were helpful in the past but they don't have the womb for what the future is bringing these are people that if you share what god is showing you now the plan the mandate for nations they will be the first to kill it joseph's problem was that he spoke to the wrong people about what god showed him so the place of prayer is a place of revelation. Number three, prayer is the protocol or procedure for generating spiritual energy.
prayer is the protocol or procedure for generating spiritual energy. Hmm. Spiritual energy. What is energy? The potential for work. The ability to do work. I hope you know energy is different from power. Power now has to do with the work that was done based on the energy that was expended and the time that it took. Is that true? Science, a scientist, is that true? Good. So it is prayer that generates spiritual energy. But it is the spoken word that converts that energy to spiritual power. That means if you need energy to speak and cause a change, you need to pray first. Elijah was a man of like passion as, you, as we are. But he prayed earnestly that there will be no rain. That one they didn't show us in 1 Kings. What they showed us in 1 Kings 17 that he went to the king and said, There will be no rain except by my word. What we saw there was spiritual power. But you see, for spiritual power to be exhibited, there has to be the raw material of spiritual energy. Because power can be created, but energy is not created, but converted from one source or from one form to another. Is that true? It is prayer that generates it. So before we come for a miracle service and we speak and you, you just hear testimonies that apostles said this and it happened. How do you think it happens? Energy was generated. Sometimes to come and speak over people for 30 minutes, you are somewhere praying for 9 hours. Because you need the words to go like a rocket. Do you see the engines that power a rocket? Engines, not engine. When it leaves the ground and gets into the atmosphere, one engine will fall off, another one powers it. Then it escapes out of earth, another one powers it again. So for your songs to carry power, for your words to carry power that commands change, you need to understand the place where energy is generated. It's prayer. It's prayer. That's why I said build up yourself, by, build up yourself upon your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. What you are doing is you are generating energy inside of you. You are generating potential for manifestation. Sometimes you need to learn to lock yourself and pray in tongues for long moments. Then come outside and watch the supernatural. You have a witch in your office. How do you combat them? You need to display to them superior energy. Why do you think that when they want to do charm for them, they will tell them to sacrifice cow, sacrifice? Everything is with sacrifice. You know why? Because they are looking for energy to power what they want to do in the realm of the spirit. And that energy can only come from something that carries life. And the blood of an animal carries its life. So depending on what you want to cause to manifest through charm, they will tell you the blood of a chicken, they will tell you the blood of a cow, they will tell you the blood of a goat, they will tell you the blood of a ram, they can even tell you the blood of a, a newborn baby, the blood of a virgin. is energy they are looking for. But look at how cheap God has made it for us. By praying in tongues, you can generate more energy than the sacrifice of a newborn baby. Any nation that must see genuine transformation must have people that pray. There is an energy where it is drawn from. My guess, why is Nigeria suffering from power greed failure? Sometimes some things you see in the natural are reflection of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit, we have giants. But we've not been able to generate the spiritual energy needed to ransom the destiny of this nation. A firstborn living like, like, like the last. But there are people that must intercede and pray and be able to speak over Nigeria and say, let Nigeria live and not die. The protocol to generate spiritual energy is prayer. Just keep praying. Do it one day, two days, one week, two weeks. The result does not come instantly. But after you have prayed for three years, five years, by that time, prayer has become part of you. If you don't pray in a day, it's like you sinned against God. Seven years, ten years, fourteen years, you are a tank of power. 
there are things you will not pray for. Just like when that lady told me about charm and I laughed. There are things you will not pray for. There are records that have been kept in the realm of the spirit. When you speak, your voice has become an authority. When you started praying, you were using the authority of the name of Jesus. But as you continued giving yourself to prayer, a time came where your, your name and that name became one. So when you speak, you also have an authority. In the Abraham understood prayer. And he was raising altars for God. When he died and went to hell, they, God divided hell into two. One side was called Abraham's bosom. Satan could not go there. The other side was called Hades. Why? He was a man of prayer. He prayed so much that his grandson mistakenly slept in a place where he built an altar and the guy, heavens, open. Is it to a thief that God will appear to? Is it to a thief, a cheat that God will make a covenant with? He just cheated his brother and arrived there and slept and God said, I, I am the God of your father. I will take you and bring you back. You make covenants with thieves? It was not him. It was his father. Abraham was such a man of prayer that even when he sent Ishmael and his mother away, the Bible says that the woman kept her son, Ishmael, at one side and went to the other side that she would not see when the child would die. But the Bible says she lifted her soul and wept. It was not the boy that was crying. It was she that was crying. But the Bible says God heard the voice of the lad. Who was crying? The woman. Who did God hear? The lad. Not him. It was the voice of Abraham in him because it was a seed of a man that prayed. It was a seed of a, pray, a man that prays. Do you know the prayer you pray now? You are generating energy that will alter even the DNA of your children. There are causes that can be revoked from the DNA of your children, of your grandchildren, because you pray now. There are things you can establish that you did not have. That you can give your children a befitting future. When you give yourself to prayer, the apostles say we will give ourselves to the ministry of prayer and the word. That tonight God will ignite the fire of prayer on somebody. That your candlestick that has long been lit up with been down will be lit again with the fire of prayer. Receive that grace to pray. Receive that fire of prayer. Receive it in your spirit. Go and change your world today. In the name of Jesus Christ. One of my mentors in scripture, in prayer. If you are a married man, go and look for him. His name is Isaac. Genesis 25, 21. Isaac saw barrenness had hooked up with his wife. This thing will worry my mama, don't worry me. And you know it was his fault. When they brought the wife to him, in chapter 24 of Genesis, the last verse, he took her to his mother's tent. He slept with her on his mother's clothes, on her wrapper, somebody that was barren. And so by impartation, just the same way I can carry this handkerchief and give it to somebody and power leaves me transmitted through this handkerchief. She received the impartation of barrenness. Chapter 25, when he saw that barrenness had hooked her, message translation, verse 21, chapter 25, and Isaac prayed hard. But brothers, we need to pray. The attack on families is too much. I'm telling you, we need to pray. Satan is attacking your wife, attacking your children, attacking your finance. Somebody is somewhere in the office making life a living hell for you. Men ought always to pray. Don't, don't get married before you start praying. Start learning it while you are single. I'm telling you, the demons that are being released in these last days, they, they've not come on earth before. You are a man, you need to pray. Isaac prayed hard. And that was how barrenness was broken. Pray in the spirit where you are. Just pray in tongues. Just pray in tongues. I feel something is stirred in the spirit. Serus kapila dahalis. It's in the place of prayer that we define our possibilities. Your dominion starts from the place of prayer. It is in the place of prayer that energy is generated. 
it is a man of prayer that can command change it is a woman of prayer that can affect her world it is not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord it is in prayer that you partner with the holy ghost it's in prayer that you partner with the spirit of god there are things that can be changed in your family it is not yet over hope is not lost yet until a man can arise a man that can pray a man that can hold heaven to ransom a man that can stand and legislate on behalf of the nation on behalf of a people on behalf of a family until the will of god is done let god arise let his enemies be scattered let them flee from before him let young men arise let men arise in the kingdom let them be their swords their snowshares the sword and their pruning hooks to spears it is time to seek the lord it is time to pray and capture the hand of god over your territory it is time to pray yourself into the possibilities of heaven it is time to pray and unlock the manifestation of god's mandate upon your life it is time to pray it is time to pray. Blessed is the in the name of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Just two more minutes and we are done. We want to see change on earth. You want to see definite change. You want to define the change, the status quo in your family, in your bloodline, in your generation. You must be a man that understands the place of prayer. You must be a man and a woman of altars. Altars. You pray and invest prayer so that in the days when you are physically weak, those prayers have become altars that can speak for you. When you are asleep, those, those prayers, they have voice, they have vocabulary, they have force, they have power. They can fight on your behalf. What kind of prayer did Deborah pray? That when Barak went to battle against the king of, 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 of Canaan, against Sisera, the Bible says that the stars fought. You know, Sisera was a, a very strange general. The Bible says he had 900 chariots of iron. But of course, one of the gods of Canaan was the god of iron. So those chariots were not just powerful because they were made of iron. They had invoked into them the spirit of the gods that they carried. That battle had to be supernatural. What kind of prayer did Deborah pray that the stars fought with? They fight battle in the day. Abi? And during the day, do you see stars? No. His son. What kind of battle, what kind of prayer do you pray that the stars in their constellations will fight? You can invoke forces from another galaxy, forces from another realm. Parushketeke balakata. If your life is barren of strange acts of the hand of God, it may be because there is a low volume of prayer. You can't talk about the supernatural outside prayer. Outside of prayer, we are as weak as the native doctors want us to be. That's why one of the spells that the devil can cast over a territory is by invoking the spirit of slumber. The spirit of slumber is the spirit responsible for why people can be ready to do anything apart from prayer. Any territory you go to and you see people are not serious with God. You see that believers are not serious with church programs. They are not serious in serving God. The, the level of territorial prayer is low. They don't have, they have just few people that pray. And I'm sorry to say this, Meduguri is one of such places. Some of the things we are facing here, there are spirits where, you see, you can't deal with religious prejudice 
you can't deal with it naturally there is a spirit that sells a wrong mindset to people that makes a, feel, a fellow man hate the other person two people can be from the same house just because one is Muslim the other one is Christian there is lifetime hatred you think that hatred is normal there is a spirit sponsoring it and we are not praying look at how lazy we are in the north we need to pray let me close with this there are four dimensions of an effective prayer life an effective prayer life must carry these four expressions these four dimensions first timothy 2 verse 1 quickly i want us to pray now first timothy 2 verse 1 Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Number one, the first dimension of an effective prayer life, thanksgiving and worship. Thanksgiving and worship. Psalms 141 verse 2 says, Let my prayer be as incense before you and the lifting of my hand as the evening sacrifice the lifting of my hand is an act of worship keep the scripture prayer and worship let it be as incense and as the evening sacrifice to you the first dimension of an effective prayer life is thanksgiving and worship thanksgiving is a dimension of prayer that guarantees access psalms 100 verse 4 enter into his gates with thanksgiving the password is thanksgiving so the dimension of prayer that guarantees access for you to know you have gained access to god's ears to god's heart is when you begin with thanksgiving when you live a life filled with thanksgiving you that here is a life that has two four seven access into heaven anything that is done outside of thanksgiving the access to god has been blocked god has no time for complainers and grumblers because as far as God is concerned, he has finished his works. So what are you complaining of again? That's a revelation for somebody. Any life that, that entertains grumbling and complaining, forget it. You by yourself, you shut the, God, the gate of heaven. By your own hand. Many believers, and the people who complain so much do little for God. Frankly speaking, they do very little for God. They can't even go an extra mile for God. Let's turn this service to an all night. They will start complaining from their hearts. Till their hearts, the voice of their hearts will become so loud that it will be distorting the microphone frequency. People who complain so much do little for God. It is grateful people that do great things for God. Check it very well. Anybody that grumbles, just check what they have done for God. Nothing. So thanksgiving is an aspect of your prayer life that makes it effective. Colossians 4 verse, 7, verse 2. It says, continue earnestly in prayer with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5 18 he say in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you thanksgiving thanksgiving and worship it achieves the primary purpose of prayer which is intimacy when you live a life of thanksgiving and worship as part of your prayer you are achieving the primary purpose of prayer which is intimacy number two intercession Intercession is a prayer that makes you partner with God to fulfill his purpose on the earth. Intercession is beyond praying for others. No. Part of intercession is praying for people. But the goal of intercession is to partner with God for the fulfillment and the execution of his divine mandate on the earth. So at that point, prayer becomes a womb that gives birth to the purposes of God. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. What did she bring forth? A son. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is. 
Aha. Uh -huh. So it was the traveling that brought the Savior. Intercession is partnering with God to produce change that are after the God kind on earth. You know that kind of prayer where you don't have prayer points. You just spend time in the presence of God. That's intercession. You are praying God's prayers. And God is jealous about intercessors. Two powerful mysteries about the life of intercessors. Number one, they have unlimited access to revelations. God will show them things he will not even show the pastor of the church. They have God's, they, they have God's ears, intercessors. And because of that, they have captured God's heart. They can talk to God about anything and he will respond. Even if it doesn't consign them. That's why true prophetic ministry is rooted on prayers. If you come around a prophet, if you follow a prophet after a while, there is a spirit and a culture of prayer that should influence you. I'm not just talking about prayer from book or prayer that they say, oh, my enemy. And no, 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 no. All those, kind, those are supplications. That's another kind of prayer. And we do that during corporate gatherings to, to cheer up people to pray. But prayer goes beyond that. A true prophet anchors his ministry around continuous prayer. So you see, they are men of retreat. They are men of secret place. They always want to be alone. In fact, if you are, as a Christian, you are growing up, you always want to be alone, not depressed, but seeking God. There are tendencies you carry a prophetic anointing. And if you are here, it will be activated this night. This night. It will be activated. As I'm prophesying, people will be activated in the prophetic. Whether you say amen or not, it will happen. intercession in intercession God can use you to stand on behalf of a family stand on behalf of a nation stand on behalf of a people he can use you to midwife the destinies of people some of you may have been in a season where for 30 nights God said pray every night 12 midnight for the next 30 days one hour and you know those kind of prayers God will not even tell you what to pray about it is later you will now discover that God used you to midwife the destinies of six people during those 30 days. You now see how God depends on men of prayer and intercession. There are some people that they are about to enter a new season but they don't have strength spiritually. Their strength is too low and there is an energy required to push a baby out of a womb. When the woman cannot push and she faints, what do they do? They carry out operation. You have to deploy external help. Some of you, that's what God does. Because in your family, you are the only one serious about God. You are the only one pray. And people who don't pray are the people who need God the most. If you are such, God will increase your rank today. Amen. Two mysteries about an intercessor. Number one, they have unlimited access to revelation. Number two, the jealousy of God surrounds them. If you touch them, you are in serious trouble. I'm not saying an apostle. I'm not saying a prophet. No. There is a, there is a level of protection allocated to anybody in the fivefold. But where you find an intercessor, the Bible calls them the apple of his eyes. God is jealous of them. If you try them, in fact, while you are concocting the charm, you and the, I had the story, <laughs> I had the story of a, a, a lady from a man of God. Somebody took her name to a babalao to do charm. So the charm is, you will say some things, go outside and blow the powder and come back. So the person went outside, blew the powder, came back for the second one. As he received the second one, instantly the native doctor dropped dead. No, God, God, ah, God is, is a wonderful person. So the source of the power, die. <laughs> to be continued. There are some people you don't touch. He said, he that touches Israel touches the apple of my eye. Ask yourself, why Israel? Do you know how he got that name Israel? He got it in the place of intercession. For as a prince, thou hast had power with God. And don't try an intercessor. Even if the person is before you in your office and you now realize later that this person is an intercessor, go to God and say, God, I beg, call your dog home. Don't try them. God will not ask what happened before he strike. He will strike first. There are people today who are suffering sickness. What your problem is you gossiped an intercessor. You don't know. 
That's why they pray and the sickness has not gone. You go back and repent and ask for mercy. Don't try intercessors. Some of the great generals of the faith that we see, many of them, more than half of their life is in intercession. Men like Derek Prince. He will not know this kind of people. Men like Lester Somro. Lester Somro was flying to another nation and he had to stop in Britain and take a train from, I think, Britain to France. And just that time that he stopped, came down, entered the train. Revival broke out in that city. People have been interceding for 14 years. There was a dark cloud of, 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 of demons over that city. For over 14 years, they've been praying and interceding. Nothing happened. No breakthrough. A man just came down to enter train. <laughs> Revival everywhere. Lester Sumrall was the one that received the impartation from Smith Wigglesworth. Go and study his life. It was Lester Sumrall that in the night he was sleeping by 2 a.m. And he heard noise downstairs in his parlor. When he came to check the noise, he saw a creature like a dragon shaking the whole place about. Devil himself came for him. There are people the devil will not go to. They will say, this one, the generational cause in his family can deal with him. You are, you are not even producing. You don't have anything that can attract me. So just leave this one. He looked and saw the devil. He laughed. He said, when you finish, arrange the place and get out. He went back to sleep. This was the man whose book he wrote about the gift of the Holy Spirit and I think that's the most accurate presentation on the gifts of the Holy Spirit ever written in the body of Christ. This man. The man of intercessors. He was the one that laid hands on a, a dead prophet called Kobus van Resburg. How many of you know him? Yes. He was the one who laid hands on him. He said, go to South Africa and shake that nation. And in 2001, God's servant, Apostle Selman, went to see Prophet Kobus. Prophet Kobus laid hands on him and said, I connect you to the line of generals. Intercessors. Just start giving yourself to prayer for no reason. Keep one time. 10 o'clock in the morning, you are a housewife. You don't go to work nowhere. Children have gone to school. Husband have gone to work. You have finished cooking breakfast. Just that 10, even if it's just 15 minutes every day, do it for one year. Watch what happens. There are battles you will not fight. Your, your prayer will rise as a force to fight for you. Number three, supplication. That's the aspect of prayer that is concerned about our needs. Give us this day our daily bread. Uh -huh. I think it's time to pray. Even the mic doesn't have energy again. How many of you? How many, how many did I give you now? Three, isn't it? And the last one is warfare. There's no time. I can teach on this. I can teach on this completely as a series. An effective prayer life cannot avoid warfare. In fact, warfare is part and parcel of the believer's experience. If you have not experienced warfare, I doubt if you are a believer. I doubt. Warfare. Warfare is partnering with God to contend with evil forces for the manifestation of God's promises for your life, for the fulfillment of destiny, for the birthing of divine purposes, contention, travail that must bring forth. There are families that the destinies of the families will never be known globally until somebody pays the price to engage warfare. There are seasons of warfare in the life of a believer. Even as a man of God, you are called, whatever ministry, there are seasons of warfare. You will need to discern them by the Spirit and know how to fight. In Ephesians chapter 6, he spoke about carrying the armor of God. And then when he had finished giving all the list. In verse 18, he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication. That was the battle. After dressing with all the armor, he said, now pray with all prayer and supplication. In the spirit. And then watching there unto. The amount of battles you fight and win will determine your ranking in the spirit. Will determine the possibilities allocated to you. Will determine the territories that God will add to you. 
people's influence will not just stretch from one city to another just like that no they have engaged in warfare you didn't know for you to have a voice that your neighbor can hear just your neighbor or your next compound say they like you there is a force in the realm of the spirit working for you then for you to have a voice that a city hears you there are forces you've dealt with Paul said, I fought with the beast of Ephesus. Was he talking about physical lions and animals? No. He was talking about spirits. Monstrous spirit that don't want the gospel to invade a territory. Are you ready to pray? Let's pray for 10 minutes. Stand up. Shoot, I'm a heart take a scot. Lift your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Bless him for what you have heard tonight. Give him praise. Shikabalate mahasu. Bless his name. Thank him for what you have heard. The word has come with wisdom to challenge you, to enlighten you. Give him praise. In Jesus' name. God put it in my heart that we will pray and address some things tonight. Any negative word that has been spoken against you, we will cancel it tonight. I taught you last week about the power of the spoken word, isn't it? Some of you are a victim of words that were spoken against you. There are also negative desires. Huh? Huh? People can desire evil against you. And spirits can work on their desire to plunge you into all kinds of situations. Are you ready to deal with it? The Bible says no weapon formed against you. Different kinds of weapons. Sometimes the weapon is somebody's tongue. Sometimes the weapon is somebody's imagination maybe against you. Are you ready to pray now? Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every word. Every word. Spoken against, me, spoken against me i cancel i cancel every evil desire every evil desire imagined against me imagined against me i neutralize I neutralized every weapon every weapon of hell of hell launched against me launched against me i condemn i condemn in the name of jesus in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray Please pray. God is addressing something now. Please pray.
Hallelujah. <laughs> Name we pray. Can we pray some more? God is showing me some things. We need to deal with some things today. God says we should pray against arrows. I saw something like arrows. You know, when you shoot so many arrows at once in the air to a point where it can literally become like a shadow and that's what we are going to deal with now are you ready to pray the bible says he will deliver us from the arrow that flies by day and the terror by night you are going to deflect every arrow that was shot against you by the wicked against your loved ones against your family members listen listen before we pray listen it is naturally difficult to predict when an evil arrow has been shot are you hearing me you just wake up one day and before the end of that day all kinds of disaster and situations and atrocities an arrow was fired but nobody had prevailed in prayer to deflect it are you ready to pray so don't pray because nothing is happening now no jesus said pray that you will be counted worthy of escape isn't it are you ready to pray every evil arrow that was shot against you or anyone that is connected to you let it be deflected let it be deflected let it be deflected back to where it came from open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray in Jesus name we pray Psalms 119 verse 126 last prayer and I'll speak over our lives and we are done God is doing things here God is doing things believe me it is time for you to act oh Lord for they have regarded your law as void the prayer you are going to pray now we are using the first part of that verse it is time for you to act by that you are going to pray and say Lord everything you have designed to manifest in my life this season it is time let it manifest it is time for you to act oh Lord lift your voice and pray 
everything that is needed in your destiny everything that is needed to manifest at this point of your life it is time it is time to compel the manifestation Mighty name we pray. Please raise your hand. I speak as an oracle of God by the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Everything that God has designed to manifest in your life this season, be it prosperity, be it favor, be it an upliftment, be it an establishment of some sort, a new anointing, a new impartation of grace, everything that is needed to manifest in your life according to God's divine timing I start Marosa Toko I command you to manifest now manifest now manifest now manifest now in the name of Jesus Christ you know what I see I see a cloud moving and I see angelic beings distributing things, distributing things. I'm praying it again. Anything that must manifest, you, it seems like you have been delayed already. It seems like you are behind time. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I declare manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. In the name of Jesus. I speak over your life today. Let the fire of prayer begin to burn. In your life, in your family, in your neighborhood, in your territory. Let the grace for fervent prayer and intercession like a fire begin to burn on your life. And in the name of Jesus, step into supernatural results. Begin to command supernatural results. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak against every satanic entrenchment in your life. Every craft of the enemy. Every evil seed planted around your life. By the power of prayer. And by the force of the Holy Ghost. We scatter it tonight. We scatter it tonight every attack of witchcraft that is launched against your future launched against your presence is scattered forever is scattered forever in the name of jesus from today you will burn with a fire that can never be consumed And may the spirit and power of prayer around your life be infectious. Be infectious from today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now please you can be seated. Are you blessed? We have not closed though. I ask you to sit down for the impartations. Make sure you are seated. Now, I saw 
just now while I was declaring, I saw the number 14. And God said there are 14 prophetic intercessors in this hall that he wants to activate. That's why I asked you to sit down so that it won't be rowdy. There are two things that God will do as he activates these people. To activate means to engage something to start working according to its purpose. Now what God wants to do with them is, first of all, God wants to raise them to a higher level of empowerment to pray and to intercede. In other words, they will find greater strength than before in the place of prayer and intercession. Then number two, God wants to um, activate the prophetic dimension of their prayer lives. That's why they are called prophetic intercessors. That some of them will begin to see and to hear. Now, as I'm talking, the fire of God is burning on those people. In fact, there's one of them, I'm, you, are, you, are, you are going to feel fire burning on your chest. There are 14 of you, inside and outside. Take that grace, take that grace. Take, take it now. Let that mantle find you, find you. Man or woman, boy or girl, contact that anointing now. Just help them. Seke la bahata man. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Just sit down, allow me to minister. And the honor. We lift our voice in worship as we bless your holy name. As you are great, you the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. I want you to look for there are seven men seven mills that I'm seeing right now there are prophets amongst us and God wants to activate activate their callings activate their ministries there are seven of you you are men God wants his hands to rest upon you now, Father, I stretch my hands wherever those seven young men are. Just like Saul, when the Spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied. Let the Spirit of God come upon those seven men, those seven young men now. Activate the prophetic in their life. Activate them according to their calling, according to their ordination. Let them begin to touch a fresh fountain of grace in the name of Jesus. If you find them, bring them for me. Find those seven young men by your power. Set them ablaze. Ignite that prophetic anointing. Ignite that prophetic grace. Please, if you get them, bring them for me. There's seven of them, young men, I'm seeing. Let the grace be activated. Let the grace be activated. You'll begin to walk in a fresh... Bring them for me, even if they are on the ground. Carry them and bring them. I want to touch them. Seven of them. Seven of them. Seven of them. Seven of them. I'm seeing three of them now that the hand of God is coming on. I'm seeing three amongst those seven. I'm seeing them. Contact that grace. 
that opens you to your calling that opens you to ordination inside and outside contact that grace now the power and the boldness to speak for God the grace to see and to hear in the spirit bring them bring them it's a sign it's a sign let that fire burn 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 you can't fight it you can't hide it let it burn 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 a prophetic grace according to the order of Moses according to the order of Elijah the boldness of John the Baptist touch that grace now by impartation touch that grace now touch that grace and let every gift of God that is in you come alive hallelujah let me just continue because while I'm talking you know God will just visit those people bring them you see the fire of God tonight is purifying and is setting ablaze 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 just hold on just hold on god is forcing me to say this now there are five people i think they are all ladies god wants to purify your vessel wants to separate you apart for what he wants to start doing through your life he wants to set you apart for something powerful but he needs to purify you i'm not saying you are living in sin no but he needs to purify you you know before jesus turned water to wine he told the the, 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 the servants he said fill these six stone jars with water water was one of the things that was used by the jews for purification before god will begin to use it, he wants to purify you five of you you are ladies now i will count to five that fire will rest on you very very hot you can't stand it god wants to purify you and set you apart in the days ahead there is a strange anointing that god will put in your vessel father please find them at the count of five one two three four five the fire that purifies the fire that purifies the fire that purifies i see two other ladies i see two other ladies one is outside one is outside let that fire descend on your vessel god is separating you apart he's separating you apart he's setting you apart for his use hallelujah amen I wish we had time I wish we had time for the prophetic I wish we had time for the prophetic I wish we had time okay let's just do one there's somebody here is either a sister it's either you have a sister or it's your auntie that bears the name Veronica. Veronica. Now, the woman I'm seeing, the person I'm seeing bearing this name is quite chubby. 
and somehow light skin in complexion. Where are you? Is either your sister or your aunt. Okay, there is a sister and there's an aunt. And I think I'm interested in the aunt. But if your sister or your aunt bears the name Veronica, come. Her aunt is up. Yes, very Your aunt. Yes, sir. Does it fit the description? Yes, sir. Chubby. Yes, sir. Light skin. Yes, sir. Clap for Jesus. There is somebody. Your sister's name is Veronica. Is it like sister or cousin sister? Want to pray and cover that person. Look at me. That guy going back to the seat. Look at me. Just hit your head three times softly. Look at me. Look at me and do it. Look at me. One, two, three. No, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Just keep looking at me. Hit your head three times. One, two. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. There's something, there's a grace God is putting on your head, on your mind. Help that young man, please. Your auntie is Veronica. Step forward. We are going to stretch your hands towards her. We are going to rebuke two things. Number one, we are going to rebuke death. Number two, we are going to rebuke evil occurrences. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing something that looks like repeated bad luck. Are you hearing what I'm seeing? Yes, sir. I'm seeing something like repeated bad luck in the life of this person. Like a pattern or something. Repeated bad luck. Is she married? The marriage has failed. The marriage failed? Yes, sir. Does she have children? No, sir. Good. I'm seeing repeated bad luck. The husband she married is dark in complexion. Do you know the husband? Yes, sir. Is it somehow like dark in complexion? Yes, he's not very fair. Not fair like her, yeah. Yes. It's kind of like chocolate dark, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, God is showing me we need to, we need to break that pattern. The battle against her marriage has been for long. Does she have children? No, sir. Good. The battle against her marital settlement has been for long. Because I'm seeing that she had disappointment before she got married to this man. Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In fact, the date was shifted. Yes, sir. His she didn't mother wear... died. His mother died. Yes, you sir. see, you see what I'm talking about? Bad luck. So they had to shift the date. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. I wish we had time today. Do you know why Satan is fighting her? This woman, I'm seeing in the spirit. God had planned that before she gets to the age of 40 years, she was supposed to have been married and she was supposed to have given birth to a child. This child was supposed to be a boy. This boy was supposed to be a prophet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Is she above 40 now? She's almost 45. She's almost 45. So she's behind timing now. Did she experience miscarriage when she was married? None that I'm aware of. Okay. So what I'm seeing in the spirit is, this is a spiritual husband, actually. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are issues about her life that very people, many people are not aware, even you guys. Yes, sir. I'm seeing a man appearing in her dreams, again and again, even when she was single. This is a man that has resisted all her marriages. Eventually it was... By force that she got married to this man. And then one challenge after the other, one challenge after the other. And now their marriage has failed. It's divorced. They are divorced. Yes, sir. But God wants to restore her. Amen. Stretch your hands towards her. Now I see the attack of the enemy to bring death. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I'm seeing an attack of death. Amen. I'm also seeing an attack of affliction on her body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But because you came here today, God has decided to show her mercy. Amen. And the embargo of the enemy over her life will be lifted. Amen. Stretch your hands towards her and command every satanic embargo to be lifted. Pray for Veronica. Every satanic embargo, every satanic deposit. Are you praying at all? Those of you outside.
in Jesus name we pray Alpha come I'm going to pray for I'm going to make declarations I want you to we don't have time so I want to be very quick I want you to walk around this place inside and outside pick two people as you are led I'll prophesy on them pick two people randomly yes now at this point I'm seeing names so are you hearing me there's no time so I'm trying to be as quick as we can lift your hands father we pray for Veronica in the name of Jesus we rebuke every spirit from hell every spirit that has sat on her destiny every spirit that has held her to ransom by the authority in the name of Jesus we declare her deliverance we declare that the embargo of Satan is lifted off her. Amen. We rebuke the spirit of death. Amen. We cancel satanic patterns. Amen. And we declare her restoration today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can return back to your seat. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. there's a lady here this is not a name that people know you with it's not your popular name it's part of your name I don't know how you got it but it's part of the name but it's not your popular name that people know you with Tabita it's part of your name but not many people know you with that name Tabita Tabita are these the two people you pick? Are you sure you didn't do partiality? Amen. Clap for Jesus. Now, I told you that the prophetic is revelatory and creative. Actually, the main purpose of the prophetic is the creative aspect. God has no business calling you out like this if he's not intending to do something. When God speaks, his word is enforced to do. Are you hearing me? So, but so that you will believe, that's why we reach into details. Are you hearing me? Aha. Uh -huh. My dear, step forward. How are you? Fine. What's your name? Ladi Hassan. Ladi Hassan. Yes, sir. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. Just hold my hand a bit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Now, look at me, my dear. There is an auntie. All right? There's an auntie you have from your mother's side. Your mother has sisters? Yes, sir. Good. There's an auntie you have from your mother's side that God intends to visit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I don't know, but this is... I'm seeing somebody that is like fair in complexion. And... I can't really get it, but the name is like a native name. This person is light skin. And the name, her name is a native name. I'm looking at her sitting on a chair. And God says it's time to favor her. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But for you, I don't know why as I held your hand, I heard jobs, 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 jobs. So I see God opening a door for jobs. Amen. In your family. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do you confirm this? Yes, sir. I, I don't understand. What are you saying? Yes, sir. Who is in need of are you are you need of a job? No, sir. I I'm see, a student. I, huh? I'm a student. Yeah, I know. I'm okay. When I held your hand, I heard jobs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Good. And so we are going to declare an open door for jobs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do you have a brother that is 
in need of a job opportunity do you have a brother who is at working age yes sir huh yes sir like an elder brother or something yes sir good i see i see a document being signed are you hearing me yes sir god said he will give him a job amen wait this is your brother are you hearing me yes sir is he married no sir not married good he's in a relationship with a, a lady are you hearing what i'm saying yes sir is your elder brother that's what i'm saying i'm trying to get the name I'm trying to pull out the name in the spirit why do i see whose name start with the letter m m yes my junior sister my younger sister your young wait 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 i said this is your brother has a fiance now are you hearing me yes sir they're supposed to get married actually but god wants to bless him in this season by giving him a job yes. are you hearing me yes sir do you know the name of the fiance no sir. you don't know no. do you, you don't even know there's a fiance no i don't <laughs> okay so let's stop there <laughs> your brother is he the firstborn? No. Not the firstborn? Yes, sir. Who is the first? A girl? Yes, sir. Who is the second? I'm the second. Yeah, the second. Yes, sir. Uh -uh. You said he's your elder brother now. Yes, he used to stay with us. Okay, he's not directly yes, your sir. brother. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, but he brother. stays with you. Yes, sir. What's his name? Abraham. Abraham. Yes, sir. What's his son's name? Daniel. Daniel. Malibu. Malgui. Yes, sir. I said whose name start with the letter M. Is this your first time of being prophesied to like this? Yes, sir. Okay. Eh? Yes, sir. Yes. No wonder. <laughs> Amen. We'll go close now. Now, you see, the truth is, I didn't come here ready for prophecy. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. There's a reason why I'm doing this. This is like a continuation from last week. I want to show you how that sometimes you don't need to be in the mood for an anointing to manifest. You just be, need to be yielded. Are you hearing me? I woke up this morning with cold. I had to take tea and rest and all of So I didn't come properly ready to prophesy. But you see, sometimes you need to know God beyond being in the mood. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God is going to give this guy a job and he's going to get married. I see him with a fiancé. Are you hearing me? She's taller than you. She's light skin and complexion. Yes, God is going to give him a job this year and I see his wedding card coming out. Yeah, amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Good. So go back and give Abraham this word that God is opening a door for him in this season. Mm -hmm. I see the breakthrough of a job coming. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, the other man that I said I should profess. You brought somebody I know, so I can't talk to him. Bring somebody I don't know. Because I will say, um, Are you hearing me? Bring somebody. But come, let me just bless you, sir. New season for you. Amen. Amen. Promotion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If I talk, they will say, eh -eh. bring somebody I don't know. You are sure I don't know him? Have I not met you before? I've met you before, no. Bring somebody I don't know. I'm about to pray now. If the person doesn't want, it's okay. Eh? Eh? Oh yeah, come now, come very fast, gentlemen. Run very fast now, you are bouncing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands towards this young man. Thank God you brought him. Look at me, sir. I see God bringing speed. Amen. Amen. 
That's why I was telling you to run. You people, you don't know when you stand before a prophet and when you stand before a pastor. If I tell you to be hitting your shoe like this in the prophet, you just be hitting it. You don't understand what it means. Okay? I see God giving you speed. Amen. Not only you. Do you have brothers? I have an elder brother. You have an elder brother? Yes, sir. I see God giving speed to the two of you. Amen. What do you do? I work in a bank. You work in a bank? Yes, sir. I see God giving you speed. Amen. I see God giving you speed. Amen. I see God giving your brother speed. Amen. What does he do? He just finished his service. He's job hunting. He, he's job hunting? Yes, he sir. just finished his service? Yes, sir. Ah. Now it looks like delay. Did you go to school late? Not really, but... Which one is not really? <laughs> he started school before me. Uh, he, that's right, not the yardstick for judging that. He started school before you. Yes, sir. But you are working now. Yes, sir. And he just finished his service. Yes, sir. And you say there's no delay there? Yeah? I say delay, sir. Indeed, I say delay. You think I don't know what I'm saying? Don't worry, sir. It's God wants to bless the two of you. Amen. Who is the firstborn? Um, say a lady. A lady. Yes, sir. Who is the second? Another lady. Third. My elder brother. The one that we're talking about now. Yes, sir. Very good. Now, God is going to give the two of you speed. Amen. Between now and December, Amen. there's a major job opportunity coming for your brother. Amen. But wait. Amen. Which of you have something to do with ICT? Computer? Like... That's the four of us or me and my brother. Yes, between you and your brother. I, me. What do you do? I can design... <laughs> Apart from your bank work? Yes, sir. You do design and all I of that? Design. Yes, sir. See, God is going to connect you with somebody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In yes, fact, sir. I'm seeing two things. You are going to do a work for somebody based on recommendation. That person now will recommend you to another person Amen. for a job. Then after that job, you are going to be brought into a team. They will combine you with somebody to design something. Amen. This is it's going to be like a software or something like that. And then you are going to have your aspect in it to design. They'll bring you people together. And this thing is going to fetch millions. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I gave you the trajectory so you would, everything will happen the way. When this one happens, you know this one is next and all of that. You will do a job for somebody based on recommendation. Is it graphics you design? Do you design graphics? No. Buildings. Buildings. Okay, you... Yes, sir. Drawings. I studied architecture, sir. You studied architecture? Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing that somebody saw something. Are you hearing me? Yes, somebody, sir. Somebody saw something you did and recommended you for a job. Then this other person that they recommended you to will give you a job and then will recommend you to another person. And then this right. person is bringing you people together in a team to design something that will worth millions. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. And that's how God is going to do the speed. Then for your brother, there's a major job opportunity that is coming. Amen. God is going to break. There's something working in his life that we're going to cancel. When he gets near to a breakthrough, something happens to either delay the breakthrough or to take him out of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's yes, either he, lose, lost, he loses contact with the people or something will just happen and push it forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do you know about this? No, sir. You may not know about it. That's the spirit that God wants to deal with. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Near success. He comes close to a breakthrough, but then something just happens and things just don't go the way they should. We cancel that spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. And this opening that God is bringing in for him is going to happen this year. Amen. And hear me. As soon as it happens... It will not be more than a year. I see him, he will begin to build. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. He will begin to build. Of course, he should call you as an architect of a brother. 
<laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. He's going to begin to build. And God will use the two of you because of what God will put in both your hands. God will use the two of you to redeem the name of your family Amen. and those around you. Amen. Stretch your hands towards me. Father, we release this grace for speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to the four winds of the earth. We call for the men and the systems that are needed to actualize this world. And we command its manifestation now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is done. Return back to your seat rejoicing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we bless you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please rise on your feet as we close now. Amen. So next Sunday is going to be our miracle service for the month of May. Amen. It's going to be a special miracle service and it's going to be the sixth Super Sunday. Of course, the service is going to be at Meduguri International School. Now, I want you to come expectant and at the same time, I will trust God that we have enough time to be able to minister. There is a strong prophetic anointing in this season. So we are going to trust God for enough time to be able to minister to people. You are just one word away from your next level. Are you hearing me? And someone has to speak that word. The gentleman that I just spoke to, even if you didn't believe everything I said, it will happen graphically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will be shocked. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It will happen gra exactly. You get it? Even if I didn't say, even if God didn't say it, it will happen as I said it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So come with friends and family members. Meet us at Medugri International School. And let's trust God for an amazing time in his presence. Don't come late. Make sure you are here. Or make sure you are there on time. Amen. And um, if you want to be part of our partners network, please walk up to the public relations stand after the service. And you'll be told what to do. Amen. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Father, we bless you. Glory to your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me give an opportunity for somebody to make Jesus their Lord and Savior before we go. If you are here, all standing everywhere, and you need to surrender your life to Jesus, you want him to forgive your sins, or you want to be restored again. You used to have a walk with God before, but right now you don't really know where you are. You have lost your fire. You have lost your place in God. And you want to be restored back to God. Before we close, let me give you an opportunity. Wherever you are, I want you to walk to the front as quick as you can. And I will pray for you. If you are outside, please make it snappy. And if you are inside, please walk to the front quickly. You want to surrender to Jesus. You want to say yes to Jesus. Let's do this before we close tonight please walk to the front quickly quickly and i'll pray for you and as they come please clap for them you want to make a decision for jesus please keep clapping i know somebody's is going to come faster as you clap if you are outside please walk up snappy make it snappy Amen. Stretch your hands towards him. Pray for him. In front, please put your right hand on your chest and say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you today. I declare you as my Lord and Savior. From today, I am yours. Now and forever. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray for this one. We declare his sin forgiven. We declare that he is washed by the blood of the Lamb and his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We rebuke the power of sin, Satan, death, hell, and the grave. We declare that he will grow to serve you all the days of his lives, life. 
and we declare that he will be raised as a terror against the enemy in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen god bless you please turn to your left and walk up to our counselors they will attend to you clap your hands for jesus are you blessed tonight so next week we are going to be at Meduguri international school and we trust god for an amazing time Come with your prayer points and let's believe God for mighty things that he will do. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. More than words could say. More than my man can grasp. There's a place where words and my reasoning can't go. Is the presence of the very one himself. So I lose my spirit to express my worship. Somebody express your worship. Oh, everybody's a mother world. Mother world. Hey! Oh my spirit!